Good morning, and welcome to what I call our transitional service this morning. Uh, we have lots of things to do. We are still celebrating Pastor Tim's ministry with us and his family and um, all the blessings and love that they shared with us for so many years. It's also the weekend when we celebrate our nation's Independence Day, but it's also the weekend when we prepare ourselves to greet our new pastor next Sunday. So with all of that, I ask you to join me in centering ourselves for this morning. Let's turn our eyes upon Jesus. Let's look full into his wonderful face. And may the things of earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Would you please stand for the call to worship? So now, O oh people, what does the Lord your God require of you? Only to fear the Lord your God, while we and to love our God. To serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And to keep the commandments of the Lord your God and all God's decrees. Would you remain standing for the singing of America, hymn number 697? Thank you. 
Would you join me in the opening prayer? Almighty God, ruler of us all, inspire the minds of all women and men to whom you have given the responsibility of government and leadership. Give to them visions of truth and justice that by their counsel and actions we may all work together in mutual respect and harmony. Give to the people of our nation zeal for justice and mercy and strength for humility and patience that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Forgive our shortcomings as a nation, purify our hearts to see and love truth, and help us always to hold one another in Christian love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. And if our young disciples would please come forward. Good morning, young disciples. How nice to see you. Have a seat. Good morning. So, how's everybody this morning? Are you ready for the 4th of July celebration? In the parade, wow. Have you boys and girls in Sunday school ever heard the story of Zacchaeus? What do you remember about Zacchaeus? He was a great big guy, wasn't he? Kind of a giant? No? He was what? Oh, he was a little. Yeah. So that made it kind of tough for him to get to see Jesus when Jesus was coming to town, didn't it? And so what did he do so that he could get an advantage and see Jesus and perhaps even be seen by him? Yeah, he climbed up, the Bible says, the sycamore tree. Uh, so he would have a chance to see Jesus. And you know what? When Jesus was walking by, he saw Zacchaeus. And not only did he see him, but he said, Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. For tonight I must share a meal with you. So not only did this little man get to see Jesus, but Jesus was coming to his home for dinner. Now that tells me something about those of us who have always been a little on the small side. Now for man, I, I'm short, 5'8", somewhere in there, probably shorter than that by now. <laughs> and you guys are still kind of small. But that doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't see you. And it doesn't mean that God doesn't see you and know everything about you and care very deeply for each one of you. So that's the thing I want you to remember from the story of Zacchaeus. Jesus looked and saw this little man, and he paid attention to him and spent the evening with him, dining together and talking. How wonderful. And so when you're having one of those days when you're feeling kind of small and maybe picked on, just remember, God loves you. God loves you just as you are, and he'll be with you all the time that you're growing up. So let's have a prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for these boys and girls, and we just ask your blessing upon each one of them. Help them to know, Lord, that you are always there, you're always looking after them, and that you are their very, very special friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you for coming down. Now let's see, I think it's time that we uh, share the peace. Yes. If you would stand and greet your neighbors with the, uh, with the peace of God.
Please be seated. One more time for the key change. Thanks, Rick and Michelle. Do they enjoy their work or what, huh? Wonderful. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your own country, your kinsmen, and your father's house, and go to a country that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make your name so great that it shall be used in blessings. Those that bless you, I will bless. Those that curse you, I will execrate. All the families on earth will pray to be blessed as you are blessed. 
And so Abraham set out as the Lord had bidden him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. Thank you, Glenn. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the 14th chapter of John, verses 1 through 3. If you are able, please stand for the reading of today's gospel. This is Jesus speaking. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. You may be seated. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Transition Sunday. Thought maybe it would be a good time to talk about transitions, beginning with the one here in the Old Testament that Glenn read for us. Can you picture this? God comes to you and says, okay, I want you to gather up everything you've got and go to a place that I'll tell you about later, but I'm not going to tell you now where that is. Uh, most of us don't like change. Put yourself in Abram's position. Talk about a great transition. That was one. And incidentally, uh, Terah, Abram's father, had moved them from the ancient city of Ur, which is in the southern part of Iraq, pretty close to the modern border, of the western border of Kuwait, all the way up to um, Haran, which is about 100 miles inland, roughly, uh, from the extreme northeast coast of the Mediterranean. That was a trek, I understand, of over 600 miles. And Terra had moved everything, herds, flocks, and they had all moved up and taken residence in Haran. It was while they were in Haran that God spoke to Abram and said, okay, I want you to make another trek uh, of about 400 miles or so, and I'm not going to tell you where that is, but you'll find out. Oh, and by the way, when you get there, I will make you the father of many nations, and many nations will be blessed because of you. Well, that's just one of the uh, transitions that occurred. When we think about the Old Testament, the Hebrews went from slaves in Egypt to desert freedom. But the freedom in the desert was totally different style of living than what they had in Egypt. There they feasted in the desert, that is, on manna and quail that were brought into the camp in the evening time. And then they went from desert wanderings to the promised land, from being nomads to suddenly being city builders, city dwellers, tending vineyards and farms and um, raising uh, goats and other herds and flocks in fenced-in areas in some cases, from a nomadic life to an urban or even kind of a suburban life. And following that, they went from a period of tribal struggles as each tribe was kind of loosely bound together for mutual defense and somewhat worked with each other. It was a period of the judges, but the people kept demanding that they wanted a king and so they went from this tribal period into one of the United Kingdom under Saul and then David and Solomon. Big change. All of a sudden, they no longer were calling their own shots. They had the king coming along and saying, okay, I need you to serve in my army. Uh, I need you to be a, 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 a matron in my castle. Uh, I need your daughters to uh, help in some other capacity. Um, they went from a kind of freedom but disorganized to one where the king was kind of calling the shots. Another big transition for them. And then they went from the period of the United Kingdom to one where they were so divided because of the latter's 
uh, life sins of David and Solomon in bringing in foreign gods into the country, into the culture, to the point where God was not being seriously worshipped anymore and finally ended up bringing judgment against them. And not only did the United Kingdom fall into two separate piece, uh, pieces, the Northern Kingdom of Israel, the Southern Kingdom of Judah, but eventually both of them were defeated and many of the leading people of both countries were taken into exile. Foreign armies did that so there would be no chance of a revolt. And then finally from outcasts under King Cyrus and Ezra and Nehemiah, they came back to rebuild the holy city of Jerusalem and the great temple. Well, when we look at the New Testament, we can also see some great transitions taking place. Let's look at Joseph, for one, and Mary. Joseph, I'm sure, had his plans all laid out, how he was going to have the wedding and uh, Mary would be his wife and raise his children and he would uh, su uh, support them with his work as a carpenter. But then all of a sudden, his wife-to-be is pregnant and he had nothing to do with it. And he's thinking about just setting her aside. Uh, the engagement was pretty formal, so it was almost like having a divorce until an angel of God spoke to him and said that the child was from God and he need not worry about taking her as his wife. But think of Joseph's plans and how his life was turned upside down. Instead of raising his own children solely, now he's helping to raise the Son of God. Wow. What a change. Well, then we look at perhaps the most classic transition of all in the New Testament, the uh, conversion of Paul. Paul is on that road to Damascus. He's on his way there for zealous persecution of these followers of Christ, whom Paul felt was was a charlatan, was leading people away from the true faith of Judaism, and he was out to bring these people under control, put them in jail where they belonged, and all of a sudden this great light appears, and Jesus is speaking to Paul, why are you persecuting me? And from that experience, Paul went underwent the transition from being a great persecutor of Christians to being perhaps the greatest Christian evangelist ever. Talk about transitions. And then there's the one that I just read about in John 14. I'm sure you all remember the setting. John 14 takes place the night that Jesus was going to be betrayed. And Jesus is trying to bring comfort to the disciples. He's saying, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is preparing them for a great transition. He himself is going to undergo a great transition. But right now he's focused on the disciples because they've been living with him, they've been eating with him, they've been traveling the trails with him, they've heard and seen his teachings, they've seen his healings, and they've had that extra joy in the evening of having Jesus explain to them just exactly what he meant by all those parables and his teachings. And now all of a sudden, Jesus knows he's going to be soon taken up into heaven and they will be left alone. The pupils will become the teachers. The hearers of the gospel will become the preachers of the gospel. Those who observe the healing will become the healers of the sick. Great transition. And then there's Jesus himself. He's had this great following. Most of the common people have adored him, perhaps because of the great miracles, giving sight to the blind and uh, making the lame to walk and to jump and run and all of those wonderful miracles that he did. And now the people have turned against him. Triumphal entry into Jerusalem one day, the next day, crucify him. Even the Son of God went through a great transition. But I want you to notice something about all of these trans transitions that have occurred in the Bible. They didn't happen because of the will or the strength or the determination or the desires of any human beings. These transitions came about because of God's will and God's power. 
not because humans wanted this to happen. Even though God used foreign kings to bring about his judgment, even though he used a foreign king Cyrus to bring his people back to Jerusalem after they'd been in exile, God was in control. And so perhaps you're looking at transition, transitions in your life. Perhaps the youngsters are going off to college. Perhaps there's been medical issues in your life that have changed things. Um, losing a loved one, creating a new reality for everyone involved. Uh, these are all transitions that we have to deal with. And so I pray that God is going to give you the strength to deal with whatever transitions may be looming in your personal lives right now. But I also want you to think about our church. We too are undergoing a transition. Not anything as great as what we've talked about here in the Bible this morning. This is just a routine thing in Methodism, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. But every so many years, the bishop and the cabinet decide it's time to move Pastor so-and-so on, and after prayerful consideration, they decide, in our case, that Pastor Sue is coming to be our new spiritual leader. And so as we look at this transition Sunday, we have a number of things before us. Yes, we are rightly still celebrating Pastor Tim and his family's ministry among us. And all the laughter and the joy and the love that we shared with them. But now we have an opportunity to do that same thing with another new pastor. The church is still the church founded by Jesus Christ and his suffering on the cross. After all, he was training the disciples to start his church on earth. But we are looking at a new spiritual leader. And the thing I like about Methodism is that I believe that everyone who is a pastor has a special calling. I was told once by a very wise theologian in Ohio, one of the uh, seminary teachers there, that when I was considering going into ministry and was starting to uh, go through the necessary hoops, he said to us in a small class, if there's anything else in the world you can do other than ministry, do it. If ministry is the only thing that you feel that God wants you to do, then that's what you must do. And so I'm trusting that the Methodist Church, as it continues to ordain uh, new ministers coming along, as it brings experienced pastors like Pastor Sue in to our midst, that we trust in the fact that God has called them, that this is God's church, he's in control, and that God is do, going to do a wondrous thing with Pastor Sue and with all of us. As we come to share communion this morning, I would ask you to do three things. In addition to any prayers for yourself as you come forward to receive the elements. One is a prayer for our nation. You can think of some of the words that were in our prayer this morning or anything that might be on your heart. Secondly, I would ask you to pray for Pastor Tim and their family in their new setting and for uh, God to guide him in the center of his will in his new ministry. And third, to pray for Pastor Sue and for her anointing to be our new spiritual leader and for us to be able to greet her with open hearts, open minds, and perhaps figuratively and literally, open arms. If we can do that, then we're going to be off to a wonderful new start in a new chapter, not a new book, but just a new chapter in the life of Mequon United Methodist. May God bless us to be able to do this, to remain faithful servants and to share our love with our new pastor, just as we have with Pastor Tim and his wife and family. The word of God for the people of God and all God's people said, Amen. Thank you. You will note that we are being old, fat, old tech this morning. Um, we've discovered that uh, 
Tim, I believe, was responsible for PowerPoint, and I don't know how to do PowerPoint. And so you're old fashioned here this morning. So if you would please grab your hymnals, turn to number 140, and let's sing Great is Thy Faithfulness. And that is truly what we're trusting in, God's faithfulness to us and to all of his children. I ask for prayers on behalf of Irene Sullivan. Her sister Karen is in the hospital. Uh, she's suffered a stroke and she is, was doing better earlier in the week, but now she's evidently taken uh, a downturn. So if you'd please keep Karen in your prayers uh, and think of Irene as well as they prepare to deal with whatever is going to happen in the next few weeks. As, um, 
As Bill talks about the transitions in this church, I just want to thank Bill that the transitions in his life brought him to us to guide us through these transitions and all the other things that you do for our church. Thank you. I loved your sermon, by the way, and I think that our transition of having some children, I am delighted Amen. <laughs> uh, to have that, you know, that noise in the background. I just think it's just wonderful. <laughs> yeah, those are sound of kingdom joy. Any others? All right, uh, then let's uh, remember the uh, prayer concerns that are listed in the Bolton insert, and I would ask you to join me in a moment of prayer. We'll come to you uh, on this 4th of July weekend and this weekend of change. And we look to you, our rock and our strength. And we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us. May we be as faithful to you in return that we may continue accomplishing the work of your son, Jesus, as we live out our daily lives and through the life and the service of this church. Lord, we pray for those who uh, have been ill and uh, are recovering. We ask for your healing power to be with them. Uh, for any who have had procedures, uh, we thank you for bringing them safely through that and pray for quick healing. Uh, for those who are facing very serious situations like Irene, Lord, we just ask for your strength to go out to them, your healing power to engulf them, and may they feel nothing, no fear, but just your love surrounding them. Lord, we pray for um, our men and women in the armed forces helping to keep us free that we may enjoy the life and liberty that we have in America. So we pray that you would guard and protect each and every one of the men and women who are serving today both at home and abroad. We pray for our missionaries around the world who are bringing the good news of Christ to a world that does not know him, that are bringing healing to many people who are without doctors, bringing medications to those who have no means of obtaining them. And we just thank you for all those lives that you have called to this very special ministry. We thank you, Lord, for your call upon Pastor Sue and we just thank you, Lord, for the experience of faith that she will bring to us, uh, for her background and her culture that she will share with us. And we just thank you, Lord, that we have this opportunity to work together with your servant, Sue, in carrying on the ministry that you would have us do here in Mequon. We pray for Tim as he goes forth to serve in uh, Stevens Point and Lord, we just pray that you will continue to uh, be with him, anoint him for the work that you have for him to do. And may he always, Lord, be in the center of your will and your love. And now, Lord, we pause so that you may listen to those silent prayers in each of our hearts this morning. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us, and thank you for your gracious presence with us this morning. May you continue to be with us, and beginning now preparing our hearts for that holy sacrament of communion. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, again, we are going low tech, and uh, we don't have prepared announcements, so I will ask if you have anything that we need to share. Obviously, the office will be closed on July 4th. Uh, other than that, are we having any Tai Chi this week? Yes? Monday and Friday, Tai Chi, usual time. Anything else happening this week? All right, then we hope that you've all marked your calendars as next Sunday is a very special one and that you will be here to give Pastor Sue a very warm and sincere welcome. I believe then it's time uh, for us to bring um, our gifts before the Lord. If the ushers will please come forward and another very special gift of music by our beloved Rick and Michelle.
But gracious God, we know that all things come from you. And so we return to you that portion which you have asked us to share with you and with others around the world. May they be used for the glory of your son's kingdom, both here and abroad. Make it so, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to begin the communion portion of our service just a little differently today. Um, I would like to get all of your beautiful voices involved in singing the first two verses of Let Us Break Bread Together. That's break bread and then drink wine together on our knees. And I've asked uh, Rick and Michelle to lead that for us. And please do this as a kind of a prayerful preparation for Holy Communion. Just sing very softly and just let our soft, beautiful voices rise up. Uh, may it be pleasing to our Heavenly Father. Folks. our Lord invites to his table all who love him and seek to grow into his likeness. Let us draw near with faith, make our humble confession, and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own goodness, but in your unfailing mercies. We are not worthy that you should receive us, but give your word and we shall be healed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That is proof of God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and, ju and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at last at his heavenly banquet. 
And now let us join together in the prayer that he taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All things are now ready. If our ushers and Ben will please join me.
Most bountiful God, we give you thanks for the world you have created, for the gift of life and for the giving of yourself to us in Jesus Christ, whose holy life, suffering and death and glorious resurrection have delivered us from slavery to sin and death. We thank you that in the power of your Holy Spirit, you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. We are your children, and yours is the glory, now and forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 696 in your hymnals, America the Beautiful. Please stand if you are able, and let's sing to our great nation. God bless us as we go forward on a new chapter in the book that is Mequon United Methodist Ministries and Spiritual Growth. May the Lord be with you. May he keep you. May his countenance shine upon you. And in him may you find peace in all things. Amen.